What do you think? Uh, 87% think that G2 is going to take it. It's closer than I thought it would be. Yeah, I mean, I... It's a joke. I thought it was going to be a little a bit in Secret's favor. Well, no, no, sorry. It's a joke. A little bit more in Secret's favor. I still thought G2 was going to take it, but I did think that Secret would get at least 20%. All that said and done, though, and here we go. Going right into the match. Villa, G2 starting on defense and uh, Secret on attack. G2 have lost... One map one match they've lost one match they've lost like three maps since paris over the last okay six months they've lost like three maps or something along those lines in the last regular season which is six months long god i wish we had a siege gg pop up there they had they lost one map yep. in the regular season outside of that i can't really say with authority but which in the was last Tepenta. yeah it was to penta good job to them but um <laughs> and then they also had a draw Against a Vitality? I, yeah, it was against Vitality, I'm pretty sure. Um, who are no longer in uh, Pro League. So that's interesting. Well, that was at the beginning. That was the first half of the last season, which was a long time ago. So anyway, moving on. Yeah, they don't lose very much. Not usually. Not nope. usually at all. For Secret, they're hoping that that trend of losing will re-emerge. Your operator bans will be Team Secret banning both Montaigne and Mira with Maestro and Glass. Almost 4 M. Operators only three though. Could have been, could have been Maver if they had a band Maverick instead of Monty. It would have been a four M operator. And on that note, Maverick is a really solid band. And on, on this, this map. on this map, he's great. And yeah. we just saw him. He went unbanned on Clubhouse in our first match of the day. Mm -hmm. And I think you could say that Aces on Maverick wreaked havoc mm -hmm. on the way that Penta played. So we'll see what can be done with Maverick. Here is it's going to be Steezy taking him immediately. So it's going to be Aviator Games Room for the first bomb site. Ah, uh, stands to reason. You get Aviator and Trophy. Those are the two primaries. Usually the uh, tertiary is going to be the... Um, kitchen downstairs. Kitchen, yeah. And uh, then you have the libra oh, is it library... Or is it living room? That's the one. Living room the library is yeah. the least defended site by stats that we have seen. Yeah, it's just no one ever goes there. Um, and the reason being is that it's so very easy to isolate the south end and plant the diffuser. But we're not going to be going there... Yes. I mean, also you have to factor in, we saw this similarly with Coastline for the first two seasons that Coastline was in. Not all four sites were played, and that's because it's a new map. You're still trying to figure it out. You, Number one, you have to try and manage a map pool because you know that you're going to always have two insta bands. You also have to try and make sure that you have strats on enough sites. And that's one of those things where mm -hmm. it could also just be that maybe teams aren't prioritizing learning that site because they realize that with the three site rotation, they can go quite well without ever Attackers needing to step foot to in library or the Attackers living room. No, we haven't really talked about this much, but uh, Mute is getting a lot more plays as he had the SMG-11 added in. His have pick rate has skyrocketed. Yeah, the sh you're just playing the shock on SMG-11 again. It's like it's like having smoke, but he has different utility. It's it, He's so powerful with that kit. It just enables a different style of play, right? He's not as good for your indir for your direct plant denial. Ogo will lose one drone to Leon Gids, the man himself. As Kanto says, okay, well, you take the Yokai drone, but I'm going to take your head. He doesn't end up getting it, though. It looks like actually all of his shots miss. Unfortunate for G2 fans. We've seen some early action as that AUG is being run by the IQ. will still continue to try to hunt down Kanto Ricchetti on drone as he's currently getting hunted through Trophy, and he'll drop to the main floor and manage to evade the sights of anybody from Team Secret, who will now need to once again flush him out, but G2 will tag in Jonas, no cloaking device active, he'll take down a drone, and there's Meepy to try and get the kill, but no. I gotta say, this is so typical G2 play right now on defense, that they've done this for a long time, and they're doing it once again, and what am I talking about? They have roamers, but they only they flex the roamers. They don't engage directly. They don't try to confront unless they have a clear advantage. Whenever they're met with pressure, they slowly fall back. They look for the opportunities, but they don't force them. And it's working out great for G2 here. I have to say, I think Villa is quite possibly one of the best maps for that style of play on defense. And I definitely expect G2 to rack up a lot of wins on the defensive side. That's uh, something that Secret's going to have to work on, really just being a little bit more aggressive with the roam clear. Kanto Ricchetti at a disadvantage with the fact that an ACOG on Leon Gids' AUG will spot the Jaeger before the Jaeger can see him and Kanto missing some shots. That will forfeit control of 90 from G2 and give Secret an easy opportunity to open up the wall into Vault. Staggering the Xkeros, 
to try and prevent any damage that could be done from an impact trick. Alem's getting that vault wall, which forces G2 to have to move around the site. They can't sit quite as comfortably as they were as they as they were before. In fact, Secret now is also rotated, and Steez is going to get kill number one onto Kanto. What little was left of that Jaeger will be no Jack more. Fabian trades that off of his own, taking out Lackey, though, who didn't appear oh, to be no. that well into the action. A couple misses from Jonas, usually quite an accurate fin, but it'll be Leon, who had done damage to Kanto before, finishing off the other Finnish member of G2. A great rotate from Fabian, all the way to 90, takes out Meepy, but Steez is there again. Eliminate Pengu as Fabian just waits patiently, but he could easily get pinched here. It's going to put a lot of work into the hands of Goga, who misses his shots, but Steezy, an amazing 4K for Secret to start things off, and the Frenchman will carry his team through round number one and give the attackers it's the very first round. Some serious missed opportunities there from G2, unlike them, that's for sure. And Fabian, who, if I'm not mistaken, had the lowest kill-death ratio in the previous match for uh, G2, forcing him, uh, being forced to uh, actually put in the uh, fragging power there for his team, and it wasn't enough in the end. Interesting thing, though, um, I think it was Fabian who had the, the lowest KD, but he also had the highest cost of his entire team in uh, yesterday's match. So, something to definitely point out and that uh, worth noting how important as uh, Pengu tweeted about how important those support players really are now they shouldn't be getting the kills though that's the problem Jonas playing on the main stairs ah some serious misses there against Leon and I, I think we can all say we've we've been there we've done that when it comes to those rails they do tend to get in the way and get very distracting in the middle of an engagement. Cantor Kenny died to uh, playing in a bad spot, I think is what I would chalk that up to. He was playing inside of Study, and was the window right next to him was broken, so he got that first kill there in the round, and from there it all just started falling apart, because once Kanto lost control of Study, uh, his team didn't really have a whole lot to fall back on. They also didn't have some general, you know, basic site control, so maybe working a little bit better on the uh, rotating back to site portion is something that G2 needs to, to focus on. But they've been going back to the same site here for a second attempt. It's a bit of a bit of a peculiar entry there from Team Secret, as they all seem to be quite spread out. But they were still, despite being as far away from each other as possible on many parts of this map, doing efficient drone work on their teammates, showing that as a, a team that uh, a team that drones together. Uh, I don't know. I was gonna think of a. A rhyme. I was going to say dro a, team a, team that, a team that stays together plays, slays no. together. <laughs> a team that drones together it. wins together? Uh, a team that, that, a team that well. plays together slays together, Michael. I, I, yeah. But uh, entry's not going to be quite successful this time as it's two yeah. very early kills from G2 onto both Kanto and Jonas. Getting Steezy and Leon Gids, that IQ sensor will be gone. And a lot of these gadgets, especially the Yokai drones, either. as well as the uh, as the mute jammers, will I'm not be spotted. And G2 is able to scramble away and now force Secret, after losing a minute on the clock and two members of their team, to go back on drones and commit even greater time to figure out their next step. I don't like this. I don't like what I'm seeing here from uh, Lackey right now. Uh, he's pre-firing his way into astronomy, but uh, that just means that nobody's droning him in, which is bad information gathering from Secret. They definitely need to work on that. Uh, in the last round, we saw D2 missing a lot of their shots. Not so here. Uh, two kills early on, and now Secret are the ones who have to fight against a pretty steep wall. The big problem, too, is that 30 seconds has gone by and you've only got three members. They might not have drones. That's the other issue, too. So they could essentially yeah. be going in blind. Fabian and Kanto adding to the total for G2 as Goga does his best to alert the rest of his team to Alems's position, playing over by the site, waiting to see. And while Alems, a nice flick onto Jonas, will be rewarded by an early grave as Pengu digs it for him. G2 takes that one and we will bounce back after most of the action occurs quite far off site. So good a good rebound. Yeah, a, a good rebound. It's, uh, it's a good way to put it. Um, overall, I, I think it really just comes down to G2 not missing their shots. There was there were like two or three opportunities being missed in the first round by G2. They set themselves up right, uh, right but they didn't hit the shots. That's really all it comes down to. Uh, there, they didn't even need to get to attempt number two. It all ended at the beginning. So as soon as uh, Secret confronted any of the members of G2, they were felt quite easily. Now, trophy 
the second site here, and uh, that's quite interesting. We're actually going to see a cap can in six picked into off of the pulse. You don't uh, don't see that every day. Cap can can be really useful though. I mean, we've talked about it uh, in the past, uh, especially on maps like Villa. There's, there's quite a lot of doorways, but more importantly, it's a map that people aren't as comfortable with yet, just because it's on the newer side of competitive siege. Uh, you can catch people off guard with those uh, cap can traps if placed correctly. The other thing too with Capkin is if they feel that secret might not be entering successfully, or maybe they're not, yeah. maybe they're not as good on drones as you could expect, or maybe if you even think that secret is going to be weak on this site and take until the very end, those Capkin traps values skyrocket, especially in the final 20 seconds of a round. You don't really have time to shoot the Capkin trap because if you do, not only do you give your position away, but on top of that. You also take a couple seconds Attackers off of the clock the here. Interesting Attackers to me, though, is that Fabian's going to be running that GSH. There was some actual debate about the GSH yesterday in the EU matches, in which there's a heavy debate. The PMM used to have the highest DPS on a pistol, and then it eventually fell by the wayside in comparison to newer editions. The I GSH mean, has a huge magazine. Man, it's the, it's the discussion of the 1911 versus the 57. It's it's the same thing. It's, it's you know, more ammo? for more attempted headshots or higher damage. What do you want? It's up to you. I mean, both are good. It just depends on what you're aiming at. Are you aiming at the head or are you aiming at the torso? Simple as. I believe Macy J said that he will always take the gun with the more with the higher magazine size because then you have a better chance of landing that headshot before you need to go for a reload. So I mean, that's definitely a theory behind it, even though the GSH does tend to see less play than the PMM still to this day. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with him. But moving on, Cantor Ketty going for Rome over by Aviator. And uh, Pengu is there to support him from the main hallway. He's got a good crossfire going on with Kanto. You can see this breach that I think the attackers actually made. They've also got Goga's Yokai drone there to help spot. That's sitting in the middle of the study for the entry that will aid both of them. We see Leon, though, win the fight against Jonas. And down, uh, upstairs, Steezy able to take down Kanto Ketty, who exposes himself on necessarily. From the main stairs, Pengu exposes himself as well, but manages to get a double kill, almost a triple with the pre-fire, but he misses the shots in the end, and Pengu will be shut down, though that is a huge, huge salvage from Pengu. That was an all-lost scenario, and he managed to get two out of it. you still got plant denial down in Goga, and I don't think Fabian's been droned out on that bottom floor. He might have to get back at some point, currently prone inside of library, holding the stairwell on which there is a body from Secret. So if Fabian times it correctly, he could potentially pop up and catch somebody on secret located. with their back to him. But it also puts all that pressure onto Goga. He's perfectly capable of uh, solo anchoring. We've seen him do it before, and he's got those yokai drones to support him. This is what we did not Jack see from Penta in the previous match. They didn't have the yokai, they didn't have the Maestro Evil Eye. They could, the anchors were alone when the, all the anchor, or the roamers died, but not so here. Plus, the cap can traps, if set up to hold the site, will be of a great assistance here. None of the members of Secret are even remotely close to the site. They appear to be towards the other side of the map, which means that Fabian's setting down that one e EDD, as you mentioned, the entry denial device. It's going to mean that it could possibly catch somebody from Secret there. And it's if you've already drawn that out, you're not necessarily anticipating a 50 or 40 or 60 damage trap being there. And oh! there you go! Oh! Easy gets taken down, and Fabian makes the yeah, correct Fabian call. He's going to try to jump on the free kill, but don't be oh, tempted no! as they've lost control of sight, another down this time on two Alems. Fabian will clean up, oh. and he goes for it! <laughs> Unbelievable! Fabian with the three-piece and the Capkin trap showing off the biggest brain on the Swedish member of G2. What a play to keep it in their favor, and they'll take the round off of some incredible theatrics. That whole... The last 30 seconds of that round was just, oh no, oh no, secret, oh no, secret, and it happened, Fabian, what a clutch, and off the back of a Capcan trap. You just don't see that happen. I mean, remember when Capcan one-shot, and there was like, oh, three traps? He one-shot, there was three traps. Every single, and they had the big old screw and the, and the, and the you know, the laser. Every single time a Capcan trap would get a kill in the chat, it was just, ha, 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 ha. And, <laughs> and I feel like we just got a little, a little taste of that again, because... That right. Capcan trap did really, really helped in that clutch. I mean, imagine Fabian's caught in between two players and one. Capcan trap doesn't get the down. And yeah, it's going to be, he's, he could still win it, but it's going to be so much more difficult. 
Uh, they, for those that are unaware of the changes that happened, there used to be mid-season reinforcements way back in the day, in which way halfway back. through a season, they would retool one, two, possibly three operators. There were a couple operators that were touched on. Twitch was changed at one point. Doc was changed at one point. Glass was changed. Blitz was changed, etc. But Capkin was moved from a three armor and a one speed up to a two armor and a two speed. Mm -hmm. Instead of his traps having, as you mentioned, those huge spikes in them, he actually got retooled quite a bit. But basically Many what times. happened was he had three traps and they were insta-deaths. You walked through them, you were dead. But there was a faint red line that showed. So they took away the line, they gave him five, and they made them do 40 damage to three armors, 50 damage to two armors, and 60 damage to one armors, or three speeds, so to speak. And you saw that firsthand. Two three speeds jump in, both Maverick and Hibana, and that's 60 damage. That's quite a wallop to both of them. And while waiting for the reset, Fabian had the marks from, you guessed it, Goga's Yokai drone, City there, insight to give the intel needed for him to capitalize on the down. And that's the crazy thing, isn't it? You know, the yokai, I mean, this is, again, this is what we're talking about in the Penta versus the stream match that just happened. Penta kept losing their roamers for nothing. And then the anchors didn't have Maestro or Echo because both of them were banned. So much information is just not available to them because of that. And they're losing bodies. They need something to compensate. Insight, Goka did nothing. He died like that. At the I think he may have downed the Habana. I don't. I don't know if that was the trap or if it was him. But either way, he died. Fabian was credited. He was taken, I think with the with the final kill. Yeah, I think so. I but think it was Fabian with. The, I think I saw the SMG in the kill feed. Could have been. Yeah. So I think he just shot him. But I, I, it doesn't matter. The case. The, the point I'm trying to get at here is that Goga didn't have as much influence on the outcome of that round directly as I think he could have. Right. But he's playing Echo, Yokai Drone. So indirectly, he's still assisting his team. He doesn't even need to be on the Yokai. His teammates could be marking for him. Point I'm trying to get at is that's so much that you have that just wasn't available in the previous match. Doing things that help your team but never get seen and never get the recognition you deserve. The Goga story. I feel like as if he was to if he was yep. to have a special on uh, primetime Siege TV here for all of you, that's what it would be called. But it looks like we're all ready to get back into the game with our fourth round after all hope was lost essentially for G2, but what a turnaround for the team and all in the hands of their IGL and Captain Fabian as an unlikely hero, Capkin, emerges to save the day. That's two consecutive defensive rounds and it will, provoke, it will prompt G2 to go downstairs to Dining Room Kitchen. So, We are going to be going to a uh, kitchen defense, it looks like, as we've seen G2 win both of the primary bomb sites, uh, AVG and uh, Trophy. Did you just call Aviator Gaming AVG? AVG, it just rolls off the tongue better. I mean, that actually does sound like really AVG. Hey, everybody always says. Aviator like, Games. Well, everybody always says Aviator or Games, right? But AVG, I mean. AVG sounds really good for a site. Yeah. So That is. That is I like that. <laughs> You're welcome. Let's make that a thing. <laughs> we'll I'm, gonna make, I'm gonna make that. A we'll thing. make it a thing, Parker. We'll we'll say yeah, AVG exactly whenever we cast it. There you go. Now, um, going into kitchen. Kitchen is definitely a great bomb site to defend. But it's a little bit more exposed than the other two. Uh, and the reason being, of course, is that you are uh, exposed to the basement and the top floor. And that's really crucial to point out. The basement is almost a non-factor when attacking the top floor. The most it does is it allows for a deep roam for the defenders, uh, an avenue for them to come up behind you whenever they see fit. And it's hard to really lock that down as an attacking team. But when attacking Kitchen, you can come up from the basement stairs, direct proximity to the site, and uh, it's going to actually be in the room that Lackey is right next to right now, or the one he was repelling on the window of, that you can gain access to Kitchen directly. Uh, it's dangerous to do, but it is an avenue that you don't have access to on any top floor attacks from that basement. Speaking of basement, it's easy. First kill of the round downstairs. And he's going to take out Fabian. All of that hard work to keep his team in and give them the victory in the previous round will not be at his disposal, nor his team's disposal. But a bit of a belated draw there as Jonas will take out Lackey. Lackey not being very successful on the entry as Zofia for two rounds now. Attackers. He picked off quite early on. Though he was also uh, almost managed to grab it, uh, grab the 
I suppose, revive last time. It's a flurry of kills as two come out from G2, and Leon Gids will get one for Secret, an entry from Leon Gids. He's got the SMG-11 in hand! He'll take two down and look for them all! He gets them! A big 3K from Leon Gids to end the round, and it is over just as soon as it starts. With Secret absolutely cracking that round open, proving that the SMG-12 has changed to its recoil, probably still deadly in the right hands. We're all tied up. There us. we go. There we go, Leon. That's the secret that people were talking about in the last season, and that's the secret we wanted to see here today. Didn't really show up yesterday, but here we go. Against D2 of all teams. Leon, excellent play there. Gotta say, individually holding that t together right at the end. Well, they had a decent chunk of control, though, that was edged out by the whole team throughout the round. I mean, CZ, that early kill downstairs, that was huge. That gave them so much because there was no one from G2 to refrag, and that's a rarity. We talked about this before. G2's normal roam game has to do with Defending people roaming individually but defeated defeated close to each other in a way where they can bounce off of each other, and there's almost always a crossfire that you have to walk into in order to challenge one of their roamers. On top of that, they also are good at falling off of engagements that are not in their favor. That was an example of an engagement at the very beginning that was not in G2's favor. And sometimes G2 will win those, but when they lose them, it can be extremely detrimental. CC getting that free kill early on. No response from G2, allowed for so much control. Again, the basement being more influential on Kitchen than any other bomb site on this map means that that control they gained was extremely valuable. I don't think that's a, yeah. I mean, you could just shoot the plant. Some people passively shoot the plant, like, I know people who will just shoot that potted plant when they get control of 90 because it's because they have OCD and they do that. I, I mean, we'll see if the game works out. Don't diminish people with actual OCD, Michael. That is. What are you talking about? Unkind. What are you talking about? Diminishing. Diminish there. I was giving credence. To, I was giving credit to. I mean, it's. We're giving credit. We're giving credence. I don't know anymore, Parker. You're confusing me. I'm confused myself, so we'll get back into the action. 30 seconds eclipsed into round number five. That transition is smooth as butter. Thank you very much. I was trying to say they would get a camera because they have a thing. That's a good thing. No, I completely agree with you. Uh, the, and, I mean, you've seen a lot of environmental debris that actually gets shot quite a bit. Think on Cafe mm -hmm. over in Pixel Spot. A lot of teams will impact the bench so that you can play there and actually hold that pixel angle with greater efficiency back when Cafe was in the map rotation. So... It's uh, just a further lend, uh, lend credit and uh, validity to what you were saying. Mm. Secret all on repel and also on drone as well. Not really repel for Meepy as he's crouch walking in trying to set up a Claymore, but Kanto Ricchetti gets one and then immediately gets traded off. But he's downed as we wait to see if Alems can capitalize on that kill. He gets hit and disoriented with a Yokai drone. He's obviously going to want his kill. Trying to crawl to freedom, or at least safety, is Kanto Ricchetti, but there's a Lems who's hot on the trails, and he will indeed see the blood trail. And then the leg of the Valkyrie, and that is just an execution. As we're now back at a 4v4. We've taken 90 seconds here, and I think Leon Gids is anticipating somebody playing by that wall. Pengu could have been vulnerable, but he'll move instead, as Leon Gids can't quite shoot through the reinforcement. Not a lot of sight and presence at the moment for G2. You're going to rely a lot on Goga to hold that together with the Yokai drone. And Pengu with a beautiful 2K on the last time we saw the sight from G2. We'll look to do similarly incredible things. Whereas with Secret, they're making sure they dot their I's and cross their T's, Michael. Mm -hmm. Getting all the information handy, but taking quite a bit of time designating this Ash to flank watch, knowing that there's a body downstairs, as both Jonas and Fabian will need to be spotted by Secret. Lems with control of 90. This is a great position to have and using those Xkeros to open up the wall into Gun Vault. But looks like Pengu might have impact tricked right the second uh, set of Xkeros right as the first one detonated on that Gun Vault, leaving a prone hole but no crouch hole, which is going to make that a little bit harder to access for Secret. Jonas on a very deep flank. Aki is in a position to flank watch, but he's not actually doing that right now, which could lend a pretty easy kill here to Jonas. The time is ticking down, last 15 seconds, and you're going to need to see that Jonas start pushing it towards the enemy. Fabian and Goga can get their own kills, and Fabian keeps racking him up in stock. That's a hard position to make work, but he certainly is doing just that. Leon on low HP, but he'll still win the fight against Fabian. Jonas from 90 will get the final kill, though, and G2 take the round.
way too long for Secret to be able to gather the information they needed, and it wasn't accurate when they had it because they got fed right into G2's open maw. So that's just one of those things where you find yourself getting caught off guard. Something is amiss with that round in particular, and the information cannot be relayed as you need it to get the most out of it. For Secret, it's been very interesting, this matchup, because you had the two rounds that they took, both rounds one and four. Those were on the site Aviator, or AVG, and then the site Kitchen. And what happened? Well, Secret basically just came right in, took out the roamers for G2, pushed the site, and they had full control, and the round was over. But then you have the polar opposite on rounds three and five here, where they take quite a while, they lose a body early, and then they really Attacking struggle to, to adapt. And as many bombs as they can. Flip a coin on, uh, flip a coin actually on the trophy defense on round on three. My apologies, because that was the one where it looked like they were going to win, and then Fabian did some of the silliest things that we have seen to give his team that victory. So. It's a very volatile game for Secret at the moment. The rounds they win, they win very fast. The rounds that they lose tend to fall apart, and then they cannot get their foot back onto that gas pedal for the remaining two minutes, one minute, 30, one minute in the round. It's definitely something they've been struggling with. If you look at the scoreboard, it just popped up too. I mean, Leon is the only one with multiple kills on Secret, and uh, it's that's not, <laughs> that's not what you want to see. That really isn't. Um, so, definitely not a great uh, position right now for Sega. They've been struggling on winning those fights, uh, especially in the early game, like you talked about. And if they don't lose, if they won't win those fights in the early, then they struggle to keep it going moving forward. Now, Fabian back on Capcan. Um, yes, <laughs> considering how well it worked for him last time, it's good to see him back on this Russian trap operator. Now, it's going to be seemingly a clear from the south. It's a pretty sensible way to take out uh, or take control of parts of this map. You can get a good platform to actually assault the site. But the thing is, again, this is against G2, and the way that G2 tends to roam is very extended and uh, hard to deal with. And you're going to see it's going to be a crossfire between Pengu and Kanter Riketi on to study. They've even got a Gushmat mine just inside the doorway there, possibly just being shot by the uh, Sophia. But either way, a whole minute being wasted here by G2. The positions will be given away by the logic bomb that goes off from Dokabi. Pengu fearing a push from the stairs, but Kanto blinded. Doesn't need to be able to see a lambs as he just fills that body full of holes. Steezy's there to recover, and Steezy in particular, having one hell of a day so far, at least through their attacking side of things for Secret. Jonas's interaction on the stairs will prompt a push from Pengu with a huge magazine. He's just what? gonna take one and not go for another. He possibly sees one here and it's a sibling rivalry as he faces off against the Sophia, but there's another body. And he'll be finished off by Steezy, an easy push and pull from Secret just over on the game side of things. And well, once again, level us off at 3v3. A lot of action taking place in this mid round and we'll see how Secret can adapt because that Michael has been where they struggled so far today. Fabian downstairs trying to be sneaky, but he will give away a free kill to Leon who has been fragging out for his team in this match so far. Jonas and Goga, the last two alive. Fabian not there to win for them anymore, so not having the best player in the world is going to make this a lot more difficult. As you come down to the last 50 seconds, though, it's been a decently efficient round for Secret, all things considered. Uh, they have enough time to get a clean execution off onto this site. Got One Yokai drone being either. dispatched there. Goga, hopefully, yes, there it is. For them, has another. And uh, that's going to be that information still very prevalent have their on the G2 user. side. Only 30 seconds, two wounded members of Secret. Jonas won't, wounded as well will yet again leave the Spaniard in a position of Goga to try and keep this round for his team. And I feel like we say that every single time. He doesn't have any Yokai drones at his disposal, it appears, as a final logic bomb will give away Jonas' position, but not Goga. Oh. He loses the fight to Leon and Lackey. Will clean things up for Secret. And both teams will split the first half and even three to three. Bring the wisdom of Villa being a more defender-sided affair out the window and possibly putting Secret in a commanding position to clear the remaining six rounds as they now head to defense. Yeah, I gotta be honest. Uh, that round, Leon. Leon Gids, that's that's pretty much it. I He's winning quite a lot of fights that he really should not be winning. Very impressive that he's managed to pull that off, and 
if it were not for a lot of these frags that Leon is getting, then we would probably see a very different story here. I'm imagining uh, probably a, a four, four two situation on or for G2's favor, but not so. So props to Leon for that. Props to the rest of Secret uh, finally waking up in that round and starting to put in their own little chunks of work. So it's great to see that coordination shine through. Defenders, now, your bombs G2 overall played their round the way they wanted to play it. Uh, there were some opportunities that were missed. Cantor Keddy missed that shot uh, when he was uh, when we saw I believe it was TZ pushing into uh, aviation. Usually don't see Kanto missing shots. Uh, Pengu got away with his life, but I feel like he was playing a little bit too passive. The reason I was I was a little bit surprised when Pengu uh, pushed the hallway as the Ella, it wasn't because he didn't peek wide and go for more kills. It was that he peeked, got a kill, and the uh, other attacker right next to the one he killed did not secure the refrag, at least not immediately. That's what surprised me. But at the same time, I, I think it was the right call to see that uh, a little bit of a wider peak there from uh, Pengu. We just didn't see that happen, and thus not more kills. Lackey having taken 50 damage early in the round is going to put Secret at a disadvantage. And that's not good, as they go to AVG. That's a uh, that's got to be a uh, that's got to be an impact gone awry, I would imagine, because impacts yeah. can do anywhere from what, 40 to 50 damage or something, something like that. Yeah. Like he's at 51 or 52 damage done to him, so that would probably line up perfectly there. Yeah, really unfortunate taking early damage unnecessarily. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm not exactly certain why, but G2 will have Jonas on Finca as a main spear of this attack. Speaking of damage being done early on, it's not to sidetrack myself, Leon Gids has absorbed almost all of his life in damage at the moment, and it's just currently a specter uh -oh. of himself. Uh oh, oh what? Steezy taking out Leon a bomb has been located. Gids, I think he was trying to reset him by throwing the bag. And he detonated And it. accidentally detonated Why? it. Why? Mon Dieu, Steezy. Yeah. Anywho. Yeah, what that was. Not a, uh, it means my god in French. No, I mean, I was talking about your pronunciation. Never mind. You want to get into this right now? I will fight you. No, I lose in the pronunciation, or pronunciation I game, I will fight but you on the moon. Fight on the moon? Why can't we just fight right here, Parker? Why can't we fight like G2 and Team Secret at the moment with Leon Gids going down to a, a pretty significant mishap, all things considered. G2 Soul Hard Breacher will be on the Habana. I think we've spoken about it before that it's capable. you're capable of attacking Villa due to its soft destruction with only one Hard Breacher. You can bring a Maverick if you really want, but you have to be very wary of impact tricking, which is why Habana does tend to be oftentimes the most played of the two hard, main Hard Breachers here. Great impact trick, though, was Pengu's unable to do all that much. There's a body laying down at 90. It appears to be the Valkyrie of Lackey, who saw Kanto on Repel. will set us up for the final minute. It's been Secret's first crack at defense, and even though they've lost Leon early on, we haven't seen all that much from G2, but they'll circle the wagons and get really close, as almost every member of G2 is holding an angle near to or into the site. This can be a potential problem for Secret. Pengu can push when is necessary, but he's got these gas canisters to contend with now, and there's only one left, but uh, at the same time, there's only 30 seconds left, which means there's going to be a very small window for G2 to make this push happen. Lackey has fallen off of 90, and Goku's going to have to confront him, but the question is, will he have the information necessary to do just that? Lackey actually goes for a flank over by the main stairs and comes up behind Goga, but Goga hears the drop and puts the Valkyrie on low HP. The Lems and Steezy, though, able to get their own kills, and wow, this has shifted drastically. Pengu with a double and a pistol off the blitz. Cantor Kenny looking for fights, but Steezy goes undetected, and Pengu, the knife and the defuse plant to catch up the clock. Lackey has to come back to the site, but he doesn't have it. Solo HP, and Goga's waiting for him. G2, take the round. Absolutely looked like that was falling to pieces for G2 there, and that secret was just going to be able to ride it out. The yeah. clock burning down, but hard to fill a blitz full of uh, pellets with the shotgun of that smoke when he's got the shield in front of him, and it was a miss. Just absolutely remarkable the way that Pengu was able to play that. And you're going to ban the Montaigne to take Pengu off of his main shield? That's okay. It'll go with the uh, all reliable blitz. And then, of course, aided... And it, I would say probably empowered by the Finca to just be better overall. As long as you can bait out those toxic babes of smoke, those are toxic canisters in case you're wondering. 
but there's not going to be a Finca this time around. And the only set of frag grenades from G2 will also be removed as it's the six pick on to Thatcher. It's the utility lineup that's going to come out to, to try and take on Secret's lineup, which looks pretty standard here. Tons of plant denial in hands of both the Echo and the Smoke. And you've got the Legion as well as just a general nuisance. Something for Goga to focus on, but a lot of teams will just drone out those goo mines and shoot them rather than actually commit the gadget to them. I want to know if we have double shotgun SMG-11 on the uh, British Operators. Sure it looks like, looks we, like do. we do. Yeah, we do. Look at that. Full commitment there from Team Secret. Uh, and it is such a powerful kit. It's no surprise to see that. Now, the overall Operator selection here from Team Secret, definitely excellent. They've got two, three really good tools to deal with. Uh, or you could say five if you count C4. But if you don't count C4, you've got two, or sorry, three, again, really good tools to deal with Pengu's Blitz, which is, which was a pretty big problem there for uh, Secret in the last round. The Blitz-Finca combo, like you talked about, was very powerful. They've rotated off the Finca, though, like you talked about, for the Thatcher, which is going to make Blitz less potent, as uh, he's not going to ADS nearly as quickly. Now, overall, still going to be a very useful operator and able to help clear the roamers. And that's a, definitely a shift in the mentality here for G2, at least ever so slightly, in the way they're handling this round. Uh, decent efficiency here, though, to uh, already have control of Astronomy Trophy with only a minute expended. Look at this, three drones ahead of Pengu. And he's basically a human drone as well. Yeah, and they've got a Twitch drone to deal with uh, all of that utility that is on the side of... Uh, Secret. Well, actually, it looks like Kanto just tased Lackey once with it and then lost the drone. So, I mean, you, you kind of have to wonder. I mean, to attempt to deal with the utility, <laughs> all right? I didn't say he was going to be successful. Oh, Ooh. Leon gets from below. Tosses up a nitro cell, and that's some airmail that takes out Pengu, and that is a message that is indeed sent and received by G2. So they'll lose the member of their team who was able to pick up a 3K to help them win the round last time. But by doing so, managed to distract, at least for the time being, Secret's attention away from the wall into Vault that has been opened up. And every single bit of Fabian's Xkeros have actually found good use, which means that Secret actually will find themselves having to scramble away from areas that they would typically sit in to defend. Speaking of Secret not being able to defend main areas, they won't have the aid of one Yokai drone because just got shot out. A little bit of a mistake there, but Leon gets picking up yet another kill from below onto Goga. Kanto looks perplexed, trying to figure out what happened to the mute down below. Love that patience there from Leon. And uh, I guess that really does set. Whoa, what a shot from Alems. Talk about uh, fights he should not be winning. Fabian able to get the first kill for his team, but it doesn't matter. Secret just absolutely shut out G2. And they managed to take AVG quite dominantly after losing it in the previous round. Uh, by the way, that's C4 on 90, I guess that uh, puts an end to the debate of whether or not you consider C4 a direct counter to shields anymore, as it was a pretty potent one. Well, I mean, it'll kill anything from below. Yeah, it will kill anything from below, but it's still, he managed bad. to get the shield. He got, I think in my opinion, very lucky that it was the shield that died to that C4. Obviously, it was a pre-play C4 just for anybody to step onto 90, um, but still, the shield was probably the best possible outcome there. And on top of that, Pengu probably could have fit in through the 6X Kairos, uh, or the rather, technically, my apologies. The 12x Kairos that made the whole inside a vault. Pengu could have just easily slipped right on in and been able to try and cleave that site in half. Interestingly enough. No six pick whatsoever from Secret. Fabian will just use it to switch hard Jack breachers from Hibana onwards over to the Thermite, knowing that Trophy is going to be the play here. Now, you're going to be bringing a Thermite. Why? Because you got that master bedroom wall that you want to crack open. Yep, and that's a very important wall to have access to. It's likely going to be their target, given they've brought uh, three different anti-electronic operators in IQ, Thatcher, and Twitch. That's going to deny any of the bandit tricks that might happen, but oh, look at that, there is no bandit. It's going to be mute jammers, very likely on the wall, but those are easier to deal with uh, as they cannot be picked up and placed down in rapid play. But uh, we'll see how much time G2 is going to spend on that wall. They have other things they're going to have to deal with in order to take this site. It never comes down to just the master wall. No, and I mean, even establishing control over master itself and then making sure that you don't get pushed from bathroom can be a difficult 
a difficult goal for a lot of teams, one that doesn't end up being attainable in the span of any given round. So there's a team that's going to be able to pull it off. I'd imagine both of these teams would be able to do so, as Secret has typically sat amongst the titans of EU. And of course, G2 doesn't need anybody to speak for them as they speak for themselves. Fabian will use one of those exothermic charges to open up the closet, which will allow a long line of sight all the way deep in towards Astro, at least towards the Astro doorway and towards the top of the stairs. A lot of people call that astronomy shorthand Astro, just for those keeping track at home. Mm -hmm. Pengu's entry through study will mean that he's going to come from a completely opposite direction of that second floor to try and put some pressure onto Team Secret. Once again, they do have sufficient counters for a shield. They've got the goo mines, which will stop G2 every step of the way. They've got the toxic canisters from Steezy, and they've got the yokai drones. And let us not forget the nitro cell from Leon Gids, who will sail overhead and find Pengu yet again. Leon Gids isn't so great. Are you kidding, kidding me? as he'll take out Pengu. And that's the very first kill of the round. Comes at about a minute and a half into play, and the shield will be sat down yet again. Goga has control of 90, powerful position, but he's got so many exposed flanks right now because his teammates are just not in a spot to assist him. That's why he's going to be throwing down that drone, looking for information. Pengu going from drone to drone to drone, I'm sure, trying to call out as much as he can. Over by a statue, you see the Jaeger of Lackey. He is not exposing his barrel right now, but it uh, looks like Kanto Kitty is still aware of his location. There it is. That's all you need. And Kanto will stay glued to that corner until he gets the kill in all likelihood. The peak and pre-fire from Lackey, though, at managing to get his own frag onto Kanto. That's a fight that you would not expect him to win normally. Leon from behind will take down Goga. That's because we saw Pengu eliminated earlier. There just was not enough manpower to push from the main hallway. And Secret look in dominant form here to defend this round. Yona's trying to get the angle onto the Aegir, but he's got to expose himself to Meepy. This is just too difficult to pull off as a single player, and as Fabian gets taken down by Leon, it's all up to Yonas in a one versus five. You can see that both of these players are aware of Jonas's location. But some bad timing on the Legion Trap, it's not gonna matter. Elems wins that fight. That's two that he shouldn't have won going his way. Props to him for that. In fact, it was actually a three-way crossfire, my bad. And Elems was on the other end of the room. Either way, though, Secret absolutely dominating that round. Perfect. Four, actually, if you consider that the smoke was playing inside of Astro, hugging the doorway to toss a toxic canister down to choke off. Sure, yeah. Jonas from coming in, but I was, I was going to note, and it was actually something we saw for just a second on the screen, the undermounted laser, the side-mounted laser of Meepy was shown on the doorway, and you could see from where Jonas's crosshair placement was, he noticed it and immediately stopped because he knew that there was somebody on his right, but he knew there was someone on his left as well. You know, I... That information, that kind of thing, is a big reason why there are some players who don't advocate for running that laser sight underneath because it can be shown, that little red dot, or yeah. can be and shown on various walls, etc. It gave away Meepy's position, but Jonas knew he was in between a rock and a hard place at that point. Yeah, and that's exactly why I'm one of those players. Uh, I mean, definitely in the not advocating for the use of uh, those laser sights. Uh, because, yeah, if you're holding an angle, okay? You're holding an angle and you're aiming where you expect your opponent to be, it's very likely that that laser sight is going to give away what you're aiming at. If you're doing that, that's what you're supposed to do, that's where you're supposed to be aiming, then you have to adjust your aim to instead of aiming where you expect your opponent to be when they peek around a corner, you have to aim at the corner, which means you're gonna have to make a micro adjustment when somebody comes around. So instead of being already aimed where you should be aiming, you're going to have to adjust your aim, and that's going to add to the time in your reaction to every single fight. So it's, in my opinion, it's not worth it to bring a laser sight and you'll make your hip fire tighter uh, because you have to add time to all of those angle hold engagements and it, it time to your reaction. And that's just gonna cause you to lose a lot more of those. So Secret has come back in great fashion here, winning both of their last two defensive rounds, which means that they're going to have to go downstairs. They're going to bring a Frost with them, and Leon Gids top fragging at the moment, getting the kills he needs. He's been playing the operators designed to get kills as well, so that's him doing his role yeah. quite sufficiently, getting droned in and enabled by his team. Not quite as much as we saw from Pengu, who was getting droned in regularly, but when Leon Gids was on attack, you saw that there was quite a bit of dedication towards droning him in. Now he's playing just over by the pantry. He knows he's got one. He's going to pick up Lucky number 13. Go for a fourth. And he's going to grab it on to Fabian. Leon Gids is indomitable. 
looking for his third. Peeking up, and he's going to... Oh, no! no! Not grab it onto Pengu, who shuts down both Meepy and Leon. And Michael, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> this was one of the funnest matches that we've seen in months. And it's a, it's a contest of the Fraggers. Pengu managing to just barely inch out Leon in that engagement. And it was, look, what looked like it was going to be Leon's fight actually went back. And now G2 are in the driver's seat, despite the work that Leon put in for his team. Currently in this round, Leon's the only one on Sacred to have any frags. And looks like G2 are going to be in a good spot because of him being taken out. Let's not discredit Steezy. We did lose track of his four or five or six kills that he had right, prior fair. to the rehost, so his numbers are definitely going to be up there as well. Fair. G2, knowing they have the numbers advantage, they have, well, they have a pretty oh. good tempo sent with just a minute to go. Lackey not on pulse, or not on his sensor. His pulse will peak out and two toxic canisters remaining for Steezy. Well, meaning there's still plenty of opportunity to shut this one down. It did not look like the C4 from Lackey was still in hand, though, so that is going to be an issue. Also yeah, an issue, the Diffuser is down on the opposite end of the map from where all of the G2 attackers are currently. The last two defenders in the way. Pengu's going to have to go downstairs to retrieve it. He's on low HP, though, so this is worrisome. He's actually not going to commit to picking up that Diffuser. It looks like G2 is going to focus entirely on the frags in the last 30 seconds. And that's the right call to make, given the situation they find themselves in. But both Kanto and Pengu are very low. A good gun in the hands of the Twitch and the F2 and Lackey. Fire and take down the only member as it's two with Steezy picking up one as well. On the Kanto, leaving just Pengu. I think you're going to look back on this one. And the secret is poised to move on to match point. Just a little bit of Steezy shown, and he puts one of the chest to Pengu. G2 gets shut down, and if only they grabbed that Diffuser, Michael, they might have been able to take better sight control and go for the plant. But ultimately, Secret, excellent teamwork to hold down both entry points through which G2 funneled and then got gunned down. We find Secret now on match point, capitalizing on the fact that they defended second and running up that tally. So... G2 Esports, widely considered to be one of the best teams in the world, if not the best team, and objectively with the most wins overall for land finals and majors. Currently, in the second match of this season, on match point, not in their favor. That is something you don't expect to see, and props to Secret for putting G2 there. They're one round away from it all being Attack over for the located. day, and uh, it took, I believe, when did Penta win? Was it the last match of the season or the second last match of the season when Penta beat G2? I think it was the second last match yeah. of the season, then I think it was Mocket so, for their last match, if I recall. Yeah, maybe, but it took to the end, the butt end of the season before G2 lost a match last season. Here, it could be day two. But it's not over yet. If there's ever a team that can come back from a deficit, it's G2 Esports. But they're definitely going to have to show us their best gameplay here because, honestly, Secret has looked really strong on defense of Villa. And they get to go back to AVG, which is, I think, well, we can all agree, the best site on this map. At least Secret's preferred site is it's the one they've been going to the most consistently. So only three minutes are going to separate whether Secret will pick up their first victory of the season. Keep in mind, in, the, in an eternal grudge match against Chaos, two teams, both Secret and Chaos, that have quite an interesting history with one another. Finding themselves toppling G2, and Leon Gids removes his brain from his skull and then removes Jonas from the round as well. And that is a tilter, if I've ever seen one myself. Leon is just taking fights. He did it in the last round, he's doing it in this round. Leon is just taking fights and winning them. And that's such an odd thing to say when they're playing against G2. I know I feel like I, I, I keep coming back to the when you're playing against G2 discussion, but it's true. Usually that works in the other direction. Usually peeking like that, that's gonna allow G2 a free kill. But now when it's Leon, as he's hitting his shots, impressive. Let's put G2 on a back foot now as they've been knocked on their heels, losing their IQ and losing a gadget that could pay dividends, especially knowing that there's going to be black eyes, there's going to be mute jammers, there's going to be goo mines, and yokai drones as well. So that's a very bad operator to lose early on, as both Kanto and Fabian have been softened up by Secret. A reset on Steezy will happen as Meepy is also taking quite a bit of damage, so these skirmishes for both teams have not really found any intended targets, at least for the time being, though everybody losing a little bit of their HP. 
G2 in terms of HP. It's in a good spot, although that's going to be a lot lost there on the Kanto. Pangu is going to get Leon downstairs, and that's a C4 out of play for Secret. One that has in the past been very, very potent. On top of that, Leon, the top fragger for Team Secret. That's a huge kill to have no matter the situation. Down below, some renovation work being done by Pengu in the main lobby, trying to expand the sight line and create more of an open concept here in the villa in the Italian countryside. Now he'll head towards the actual site and use the skeleton key to try and put some pressure on the defenders above. He'll lob up a frag grenade, but there's nobody playing behind the bar. The intended target has now moved, as we can see the smoke hugging the A chassis a lot tighter than before. G2 is going to have to quicken things now, as you've got to imagine that Meepy has left quite a bit of goo mines separating both G2 and Secret from one another, and they'll be on the path inwards. Kanto, Marchetti, and Pengu trying to deal some damage here to Steezy and not hit one another, but it's Alems will pop up and take down Fabian, and there goes another member of G2 as Pengu falls. Kanto trades it off, but we are very close. Both Meepy and Steezy are one tick of damage away. But Goga and Kanto Ricchetti both stacked up, trying to enter one shotgun blast. We'll down them both, and Secret will find their first victory, knocking G2 down the standings. As they sat tied atop with Ents, an excellent game from Secret, and a pretty good, I would say, second day after falling short of Chaos yesterday. Also, it means we're not going to be ticking off the days until G2 loses a match in a season any longer. Right off the bat, Secret make it happen. Massive props to them. That was an excellent match, especially from Leon Gids, dropping 15 kills. And that's after the rehost. Don't even know what he had before.